A very warm welcome to online worship with the congregation of Trinent Parish Church for Sunday the 30th of October. It is good to be with you. Our call to worship. Creator God, artist and visionary, you paint the skies and each autumn leaf. Hospitable God, both guest and host, you welcome all and exclude none. Eternal God, of ages past and of today, you hold our future too. Let us worship God by singing together, let us build a house where love can dwell. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the source of good on earth. You give us life, breath, hope, and ways to live our lives. You share your goodness with us, for you are faithful to your people. You give us your wisdom. You make your law clear in the Bible and lead us now to know it and trust in it, in the living power of the Holy Spirit. Loving God, in response to your goodness and wisdom and your call to us, we gather now. We come in our ordinary days into your holy presence. We set aside our concerns and open ourselves to you in this time, teach us what is true in life. Remind us of your law. Help us to know what is holy and what is sacred and grow our understanding of your ways. Loving Lord, we need your help. We have habits and ways which are not yours. They are selfish and divide us from others and lead us to keep too much for ourselves, leaving not enough for those around us. Forgive us, Lord. Keep us in your holiness, 
Help us to give up and not to hold on to things which dishonour you. Turn our thoughts from our own safety and security to words and actions which bring glory to your name and bring new life and your love to those around us. Gratitude for your mercy and for your love and compassion. We pray now the words which Jesus taught us to pray in whichever words are most familiar to each one of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our lessons today are read for us by Murdo MacDonald. And they are Second Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 4 and 11 to 12. And then from the Gospel of Luke, reading in chapter 19 from verse 1 to verse 10. Our first reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verses 1 to 4 and then verses 11 and 12. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as, it is, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you is gro- for another, one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast to you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 19, reading from verses 1 to 10. Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Amen, and may God bless to us the reading of his word. Our hymn is Just As I Am Without One Plea.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Fair Isle, Cromarty, Forth, Tyne, Dogger, Forties, Viking, are names of some of the 31 sea areas around Britain. And they each have individual weather forecasts, which we can hear four times a day on the radio if we wish to. For the weather at sea is very changeable, and folk out there in the wind and the waves need to know what the forecast is. It's true for us too if we want to plan our days on land and the forecast for Sunday the 30th of October in Trinent is light cloud and moderate breeze and we can look forward to a glimpse of the sun at 2pm in the afternoon. At its simplest we need forecasts because the world around us does not stay the same whether we're thinking of the weather political leaders, our work, our health, our families and our friends. But forecasts are simply a definition, a statement of what is judged likely to happen in the future, in the world outside us, and it's, they're made by other people. But in the Christian life, we have the choice to trust and depend on God's forecast for our lives, or perhaps more than that, on God's promise for our lives. And that's a promise to change us inside in a way which helps us to face and deal with whatever unsettled, changeable and difficult circumstances we face in the world around us. The story of Zacchaeus, of a wee man up a tree, is part of a much bigger story in Luke's Gospel. And Jesus has come across many folk in his journey to Jerusalem. And on the way, he has gathered a reputation of coming close to tax collectors. He has called a tax collector to be one of his disciples. He has shared meals, talked, and sat beside many tax collectors. But of course, they had their own reputation. People thought that they were collaborators with the Roman occupiers and dishonest in collecting more tax than they needed for themselves. And Zacchaeus, as chief tax collector, will be prosperous and comfortable in a big city like Jericho. But folk would have been likely to have avoided him, maybe crossing the road when they see him coming, keeping their backs turned firmly to him and certainly not welcoming him into their homes. But the time had come, Zacchaeus knew that his prosperity and his comfort were not enough. His life needed to change. And he has heard that Jesus is someone who eats with folk like him. And he hoped, for what? For some sort of contact, a turning of Jesus' head to look at him before he passed on. Surely he couldn't hope to share a meal with him. Polish writer Olga Tokarczuk writes a short description of a special meal in one of her books. And she tells a story of an older woman called Janina who lives in a small house in rural eastern Poland. In her house she is making mustard soup of three kinds French Dijon mustard, smooth brown mustard, and mustard powder. And she transfers the care and the attention that she gives to her cooking to the three friends who are coming round to have a meal with her, maybe eating together for the last time. And looking at them with care and attention and love, she has a new insight. They are like family to her, but the thing that they have in common, she thinks, is that none of them do anything essential. In her Nobel Prize winning story with the strange title of Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead, she says, 
we don't produce important ideas, no vital objects or foodstuffs. We don't cultivate the land, we don't fuel the economy. We haven't come up with the idea for any invention. We have no power. And then she says, my life's harvest is not the building material for anything, neither in my time, now, or in any other, never. These could be the words of anyone who feels small at some point in life, not physically small, but small in soul and small in courage, of someone who is in need of another prediction, another forecast, another promise about the value of his or her lives and the prospect and the possibility of change. I think we find that promise in the gospel reading today. For Zacchaeus' judgment was right. He needed to see Jesus. Jesus does not leave Zacchaeus where he is, isolated and distant in that tree. And Jesus is more than clear about his need to see Zacchaeus. For he says, I must stay at your house today. Out of all the people in the crowd, Jesus has chosen Zacchaeus and says, I must stay at your house today. It is an imperative and so Zacchaeus receives more than he could ever expect. Perhaps a hope of seeing Jesus at a distance changes to the reality of being with him in his own home. Zacchaeus changes from being an uninvited guest, rejected by others, to becoming a host. He changes from taking things from others to giving things to others. For Jesus leaves Zacchaeus in no doubt about his value and in no doubt about his ability to be hospitable and generous. For he says, I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus may have nothing to eat in his house. He may have nothing ready, but he is the host of other resources, of money in particular, which he releases generously to others. His external circumstances remain the same. He does not give up his job, but his meeting with Jesus changes him inside. Jesus looks for him, sees him as he is, and sees the possibilities for change in him too. And so Zacchaeus sees his life in a new way and is changed to be an honest and generous man. I think choosing to trust in, that, in the promise in this story, in Luke's gospel, a promise given just before Jesus enters Jerusalem for the last time, just choosing to trust that that promise is the same for us. The promise is that God knows each one of us and sees possibilities for change in our lives that we can't. And that promise, when we accept it and trust in it, changes us inside, perhaps suddenly or perhaps more likely, gradually and slowly, changes us to know the true value of our lives, just where we are, to know what we can give instead of what we can keep for ourselves. Perhaps especially in children's Bibles, we often see pictures of Zacchaeus up a tree looking down at Jesus. But this is just the start of his story. And we may imagine other pictures of the rest of his life where he has contact with other people, where he shares life with other people and whether he reaches out to others to bring them deep into the center of the crowd too. These are the sort of pictures that we can paint in our own lives too. Lasting ones based on God's view of us as worthy of God's attention and love and care and nurture and worthy of God's trust in us that we can grow in love for him and for others, whatever the changes we face and endure in our own lives. Verse 10 of the gospel reading we heard read to us today says, for the son of man 
came to seek out and to save the lost. The promise is there to be chosen, received, trusted and lived. God's promise to you and to me. Amen. Our hymn is, This is a Day of New Beginnings. Wendy Archibald will lead us in our prayers of thanksgiving and for others. Let us join together in our prayers for others. Living God, we thank you and praise you for your very real presence in our lives, for the assurance that we face nothing alone, for the certainty that you love and care for us every single day. We thank you and praise you for your faithfulness to us, whoever and whenever we are in life, and for your promise of eternal life with you. As we are blessed, Lord, so too we pray for your blessings on others. We pray for all those whose lives are too busy for you, for all who crowd you out with the things of his, this life, and for all who do not recognize that you and your ways are all that matter. We pray for all who have heard you, but chosen to walk a different path, not fully recognizing that you alone hold the key to a full life, to wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. We pray for all who love you, but cannot live their faith openly for fear of persecution or worse. Protect them, Lord, and give them the strength to hold on. We pray for people and places where life is a struggle, but where others reach out to help. And at this time, we remember especially our Church of Scotland, the plans and projects 
she supports at home and abroad. Guide and inspire all who plan for the future and encourage those who deal with the day-to-day -day tasks which make it all possible. Faithful God, we pray that we will always be mindful of whose we are and whom we serve, turning to you and following wherever you may lead with thankful hearts. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our final hymn is, O Jesus, I Have Promised. Go from this time of worship in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest on you and remain on you and on those you love and pray for today, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>